Losing a fur baby may be one of the most painful moments for a fur parent. To ease the grieving process, a toy maker found a way to immortalize the memory of beloved animal friends. My name is David Tan, and I am the founder and CEO of Bunga Teddy, based here in Abanga, Philippines. In 2019, David himself experienced the grief of losing a pet. When his dog Fusion passed away. The idea of creating Question About Clones actually came when my dog, it's, I used to have a golden retriever, passed away. And after it passed away, um, I had this thought of, you know, how can I have a remembrance of my pet? You know, I only had pictures. Since I own a uh, plush toy factory, why don't I try making an actual, real, uh, realistic uh, replica of my dog? Aside from his pet, one of David's motivations in being a toy maker is his newborn. Plush toys is something that I've always uh, had an interest in, and I have a new baby boy, and that also is an inspiration for me, you know, because I want to make some toys for him. David's life like plush clones are made from various materials. He uses different types of synthetic furs, fabrics, and other accessories to make the replicas come to life. What we're doing is definitely not taxidermy. We don't deal with the real pet at all in any way. We're just using 100% fur that was made for teddy bears. The main difference is that we're constructing something from uh, materials that are just fabric and accessories, whereas taxidermy, it's more involved with the actual uh, skin of the, the deceased pet. So for the process of making a plush animal clone, what we do is we first get photos from our customer uh, with a lot of different views, top, front, back, side, and even bottom, underneath the, the paws. So once our pattern maker sees all those details, he's able to make a uh, paper pattern. And then once he has that pattern finished, he will uh, put that on top of fabric, and then they're gonna cut over the pattern and they're gonna cut out all the pieces of the fabric. So now what they do is they sew it into the skin of the uh, clone. And from the skin, we uh, make the, um, it's called a frame. What we do is we put it inside the, the skin. And then after that, they will stuff it with the uh, stuffing and then sew it shut. And then the magic happens at the very end where they do the airbrushing. So they'll have a picture of the pet and then they'll have the airbrush and then they're gonna start airbrushing all the little details of the clone until it comes to life. For David, the solace that these plushies bring to pet owners is what pushes him to continue to improve his craft. There was actually a video I watched where it brought tears to my eyes. It's the dog whisperer in the Philippines. And he made this entire episode about one of his dogs that passed away. And the most touching moment of his vlog was that he brought this, you know, his dog passed away and he brought the clone to his other dogs. And immediately the other dog started sniffing under his ear and licking under his ear. And what he was saying is that, wow, that's exactly what they used to do when the dog was still alive. So what's amazing about this is that what we created is something that transcends humans. Even animals are convinced that our plush animal clones are real.